Hello everybody, I'm Dr. Yan Yu. Today we're going to be talking about the clinical findings of asthma. Before we begin, you can help support us in our work by liking the video just as it's starting out and by subscribing to my channel. And with that, let's get started. Asthma is defined as a disease that involves episodic airway constriction and airflow obstruction due to hyper-responsiveness to certain triggers. Please see the slide on the pathogenesis of asthma or see the video on this topic for more details about the triggers. There's two physiological components to the disease of asthma. First, in response to triggers, there are variable sporadic airway obstruction events that occur. Also, there's an associated allergic eosinophil response. Let's talk about the variable airway obstruction events first. If these events are severe, the airway obstruction will reduce ventilation of the alveoli, which in turn leads to reduced oxygenation of the blood, resulting in hypoxemia, these processes result in the heart rate increasing to improve the perfusion of tissues, manifesting as tachycardia, as well as the respiratory centers increasing the rate of breathing to compensate, resulting in tachypnea. Back to the airway obstruction, during expiration, positive pleural pressure squeezes on the airways, which worsens airway obstruction. The worsening airway obstruction leads to gas trapping within the alveoli, which hyperinflates the lungs, resulting in the body requiring more effort to ventilate these larger lungs. Similarly, patients need to voluntarily contract their expiratory muscles faster and more forcefully to expire effectively. This results in episodic dyspnea as well as chest tightness. The increased airway obstruction also leads to narrow airways. The narrow airways as a result of increased airway obstruction also leads to turbulent airflow, which is heard on auscultation mostly when the patient expires. This turbulent airflow manifests on auscultation as an expiratory wheeze, which is a high-pitched expiratory sound. Finally, during severe attacks, airway obstruction results in the patient compensating by activating accessory respiratory muscles to increase thoracic volume. That results in visible contraction of neck muscles, such as the scalene and sternocleidomastoid muscles. Severe attacks of airway obstruction also mean that the lungs take longer time to empty, this results in a prolonged expiratory phase of breathing. Next, we move on to the associated allergic eosinophil response. When the eosinophils underlying the pathophysiology of asthma infiltrate the nose, that leads to rhinitis or sinusitis, which then manifests as a runny nose, sneezing, and other such symptoms. When the eosinophils infiltrate the skin, that leads to atopic dermatitis, resulting in a rash or urticaria, otherwise known as hives. And finally, when the eosinophils infiltrate the eyes, that results in conjunctivitis, which manifests as red, itchy eyes, as well as visual blurring. Note that asthma attacks, as described in our pathogenesis video, have two phases. An immediate attack phase within zero to two hours after exposure to the trigger, due to the acute release of histamine from mast cells, as well as a delayed attack phase, four to 12 hours after exposure to the trigger, due to eosinophil infiltration of the airways keep the possibility of a delayed attack in mind when treating patients in the emergency room. Note also that symptoms often worsen at night or early in the morning, and that asthma should be suspected in children experiencing dyspnea or shortness of breath with multiple episodes of upper respiratory tract infections or croup. So that's it in terms of the clinical findings of asthma. If you're interested in the asthma topic, you should watch the video on the pathogenesis of asthma and the findings on investigations for asthma next. That's all for today, everybody. Once again, please support us in our work by liking the video and by subscribing to my channel. Thanks, everybody. See you in the next video.